They would skip mezzanine. Yeah, yeah, because no one wanted to listen to it. Isn't that right, Jen? No one here wants to listen to Massive Attack mezzanine, right? No one's interested in that? Nobody wants to listen to mezzanine, right? Yes, I want to listen. Ew. No, lie detected. Cue it up. Just refund the sender already. Listen to Heartbreak on a Full Moon by Chris Brown instead. Uh, Let's not do that. All right. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I'm, I am recording. I am recording right now. Um... Let me see. Am I missing anything? Hold on. Let me see if I'm missing anything. Jesus Christ. Bars? Yeah. Oh, my God. Talk about someone with nothing to say. Holy shit. Godzilla remix. All right. Let's record this like it's a video because... um. All right. Hello everyone, my name is Bradley, I have a Brad Taste of Music, and uh, a long time ago, I recorded Mezzanine Part 1 uh, for my channel. It was, I want to say, almost four years ago, let's say three on the safe side. I recorded, and I loved what I heard. It really stuck. It stuck so much, um, but I never released Part 1. Ever. It's very disappointing, considering the fact that I'd probably at the time give it about a 9, and that's pretty much where I stick with uh, for the first half of this album. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, the first half of this thing is absolutely uh, unbelievable. It's fucking amazing. Um, there is basically a debate between, you know, whether or not Massive Attack Mezzanine is like the best trip-hop at the time, or whether it's Portishead is the best trip-hop of the time. Bro, who cares? Because we can stream both. They both got a different vibe. I like Mezzanine because I feel like what it does is it captures this dark, locked-in aesthetic that has not been utilized through Trip Hop. And they do it, and they make it massive, as their name should imply. That is what Mezzanine is to me. Massive, from what I've heard. And we are blessed. Because, believe it or not, even though I never released part one, and I've never heard the second half of this album, someone still was gracious enough to send this project in. That's Harakiri says, this album is on Spotify. It's one of my favorite records ever. Massive Attack is understandably a bunch of people's favorite bands, myself included. They're so good. Wow. Uh, I expect this, um, wait till you hear my music. I expect this to take down the stream. Um, so we'll probably have to split this into two parts. Uh, so yeah, when the stream goes down, just know that, uh, yeah, we're gonna stop listening and we'll, we'll finish it eventually. You know, we'll, we'll put out the video. It's all good. You know, we just, you know. <laughs> Anyways, have viewers be jealous that I caught the stream? Bro, what? Anyways, our song Angel. This song is crazy. Pause. This is what I'm saying. It's so big. Pause. For context, at the time, this was basically an attempt to shatter the box that current trip hop had become, but leading into being arguably the most defining album of the whole genre. All right, all right, all right. She's on the dark side. It's so menacing. It's like it's trip hop, but it's sludgy. It's slow. Lethal. A good word, lethal. This album is music in 4K. That's real shit right there. My friend wants to describe this album as what the idea of music sounds like, and you know what? I can't disagree. It's what the idea. Man, it's like the push and pull is just so perfect. Just layers upon layers of instrumentation, all expanding the mood. Yeah, I mean, it all just is like the song Rose. It's like it all moves at once as like a group action. With all these instru like instrumental pieces, I, I feel like layering amazing opener. It just feels soothing while also making damn sure they know you're playing by their rules. So heavy and poisonous, making me watch my step in the mix of fear and ecstasy. As long as the album, it's a little over an hour, I believe. That's how you start an album. So what is the big bad Brad? Ha yeah, I'm not even gonna play. Yeah. I'm feeling. Okay. 
you will never pop me. In a minute, I can be a little cocky. You ain't never gonna stop me. Every time I tell a nigga, gotta sell it. I Attend for the start song, crazy. Yeah, well, here's the thing is, again, I'm... This is not my first time hearing this. Um, I think this is one of the best album openers I've heard, period. Uh, this sets the mood so perfectly. And it's not like the rest of the album is just a redundant copy of this. It really is not. Um, at least, again, I've only heard the first five songs. You gotta understand that. Um, but the sounds of this song crawl in the most vivid, sludgy, instantaneous way possible. It is a song that completely nails exactly what it's going for, and you can feel it, and it gives me shivers. I am moving to the groove the entire time. I am feeling the energy. I am feeling the weight of it all. Um, and, it's, and it's fucking amazing. Uh, next song here is called Rising Sun. Angel is one of your least favorites? I see myself in that rub on my lover. You motherfuckers haven't lived till you listen to this shit with $3,000 headphones. There, I said it. Thank you, Katharina. I probably have it somewhere, but I don't think I hit record for it. Oh, I did read that. I didn't say it anything, though, but I did see it. Clifford's just describing an orgy. So, for me, Rising Sun, um is a completely different experience from the first song. And you know what? I enjoy it now more than I did previously due to the fact that following along with these lyrics, uh, they are actually quite engaging. Um, hearing little bits and pieces here with sort of a very one note flow, I feel like doesn't really do this song justice as reading along with it. It's, <laughs> weirdly an extremely vivid experience um yeah I'd, I'd say it's a nine plus for me yeah it's it's grown on me shit wow lyrics prevented from a 10 well that's the thing is i felt that way before but I don't feel like that anymore. In fact, reading the lyrics, I misheard a lot of them when I first heard this, but it's actually, I don't know how to describe it. And I think that's why it works. It's something that again, feels like it's so big in scale uh, that it's hard to like, just put it in a nutshell. Um, and that's just part of the adventure and the experience here. Um, next song is Teardrop and like seriously, the the first, bro, this this album is crazy. All right, House MD. <laughs> I thought the you know this. I get <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one was originally written for Madonna. It's kind of cool. It's like my 50th time hearing this and I'm blown away. I mean, I've praised this song to no end before. I mean, it should be no surprise that I love this track. I think it's one of the best songs ever made. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm feeling... Okay. 
Yeah, it's not only a song that I feel like is amazing on its own. Um, I mean, I guess I'll go into that first. Uh, instrumentally, it's this beautifully haunting, but, you know, I, I feel like alluring, chiming sound uh, with basically the sharpest, most clear <laughs> melodies you could possibly follow along with. Um, the lyrics on this one are loving, but again, due to the sound, um, bittersweet and ominous. And I feel like it works incredibly well as the third track on this album due to it feeling like yet another very heavy shift um, in the sound. But again, the the very dark resonance of the previous songs allows this one to be a more refreshing and charming experience. Um, but also at the same time, there is poison in the well. And um, it just feels like the tension doesn't disappear, even though this feels like a moment of relief. This song is a 10. It's fucking incredible. Um, I got nothing else to add. It's it's great. The next song, I, I'm going to be honest. This next one I think is very underrated um, from this project that I've heard. Again, I've only heard the first five songs. But this next one I feel like doesn't receive as much love as some of the other tracks. Cranking the volume. <laughs> Inertia Creeps. I do apologize as I am about to completely ruin the vibe for the sole purpose of, well, honestly, there's no reason. Now, I want you to understand that this is a song that personifies inertia in a way, basically an action that results in movement uh, towards another action. Um, and it does it in this way that is creepy, like a fucking creepy crawling bug on the floor. Now... Yeah, I'm I'm just doing this to torture you. This is a song called Inertia. Anyways, point being, uh, you might be like, Brad, why did you subject me to that? Well, there probably is a bigger point to all of it. Uh, realistically, I guess if you want to make a comparison, Inertia Creeps is massive. Inertia by AJR. I've worn the same pair of skinny jeans since I was 15. It's microscopic. It's got balls the size of acorns. All right. How dare you bring up AJR in a massive attack stream? One has awesome choruses and insane production, and the other is a trip hop band. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Feel that this is the kind of song you're willing to get your damage to. I, I relate. Have you heard Dissolved Girls? If not, so excited. I don't think so. No, I don't think I've heard that. Um. Okay. So Inertia Creeps for me is if there was ever a song on this album that I would describe as a sonic labyrinth, it is Inertia Creeps. It is one of those that really does feel like the equivalence of a snare, um, like a trap, something that really holds you and torments you uh, throughout the entirety of it. Um, it's suspenseful. It's gigantic. The sound is as rich and as tuned as it could possibly be. And yet, even though I've heard this song many times, I'm still amazed that with this listen, I got something else out of it. Um, yeah. I'm feeling... Okay. So yeah, this uh, four-track run is basically what I know of this album. Um, I don't remember the next song, but I very vividly remember these four. Uh, so it is possible that we are about to enter uncharted waters, and I am slightly nervous because, yeah, this first four-track run is insane. It's completely insane. 
here we go. Next song, Exchange. Proud I want to know uh, Man Next Door is a reggae cover. Really? Huh. Got us. We're still working on lyrics. click that button again exchange is a fantastic carry uh, carry out of this album i think that it continues the vibe and does it extremely well um yeah it, it's easy to call this unnecessary but i genuinely think that it's a really good breathing moment that still keeps the tension um i really love that i think that it's if you're going to do an interlude style song like this have an instrumental that feels stripped back but yet still uh, grabs you by the balls I'd give it a nine. Devil may eat. Hoo ha! I'm not gonna click the button. It's way too loud since I'm cranked up the volume. But hoo ha! Yeah, it's an amazing continuation in my opinion. Next song, Dissolved Girl. Thank you, Lilith Pad. Hoo ha! Okay, I'm gonna pause real quick. Um, you guys remember that Ohio uh, songs album we just listened to, uh, the Electric Co. one? Um, how basically they switched out singers midway throughout the album, and it basically created an entirely different vibe and feeling. Um, what I feel like I'm getting right now is once again a Sonic Labyrinth. This is another switch out, another left turn. But it also feels like it it means something and it's here for a reason. It gives this album another dimension, a sense of cohesion and connection. It's powerful. With this being the first major track, I'd say, that I haven't actually heard from this album, uh, consider me very nervous going into it. Um, at first, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is uh, definitely a left turn, but it's maintaining the same sound. Um, but I really feel like what they pulled off throughout this six minutes is honestly just breathtaking and unbelievable. I'm feeling... Thank you, Anthony Gates. Ooh, ah. So, yeah, somebody said this is like a, uh, what is it, Madonna Ray of Light song mixed with Nine Inch Nails. And I actually completely understand that, but I think what makes it work is the placement. Um, this song kind of is the next stage of Teardrop. It is the follow-up a more distorted and unexpected version of that song, something that is a bit grimier, something with a very intense uh, intense switch and, and strong sense of structure, um, but also at the same time, it's puzzling. It makes me think, and it continues this album feeling like pieces are connected. It's still amazing. Hmm. My most liked review for this album on Album of the Year says, sounds like background music for shooting heroin and that's accurate. Jesus Christ. Next song, Man Next Door. Always a fussy and far. He gets 
I mean, since everyone's talking about um, the vocal performance and whatnot, I'm just going to put it like this. Um, this album is one of those that is so outside the box that it's allowed to essentially have uncomfortable scratches. A song like this, in any other regard, if it wasn't for the fact that there were so many left turns on this album, might not work as well. Um, but it's another left turn. It's another unexpected moment, and it's another piece of the puzzle, and I like it. I've read, I keep forgetting, uh, you could send one of those every time you get a gifted membership. Yeah, 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 thank you. Ooh ha I'm not going to click the button. It's a bed that lives next door. Okay, so another reason why I love this track. This, honestly, if we're talking about the overall feeling of trapped, uh, feeling like an unnerving doom happening throughout this album, th this is the first moment where it's not abstract. And I think that's why this song works so well. It is the first one where I feel like you can feasibly walk outside of the very, like, uh, I'll say the word again, abstract, like... Um, soundscapes and ideas throughout this project and kind of like with um teardrop where it's this moment of brevity this one sort of takes you out of that uh hole that this whole thing has been in and you're kind of seeing the outside and it, it kind of feels like a greater concept for this project um by the end of this i'm actually surprised at how well this actually ties in um despite initially wondering what the hell is going on um yeah <laughs> Sounds like hiding for someone at night on the street. It does. It sounds so desperate. It sounds very real. Like, it's one of the few moments of this album that, again, is just so clear. Someone wants to make that. Don't make it annoying, but something kind of clean and clear. Maybe, like, do one of those fancy font things to it. See what Clifford said. Yeah, Man Next Door, I think, is a fantastic continuation. Um, one of those that, again, at, at first is slightly uncomfortable, but once you sort of understand what it's going for, it becomes... Uh, one of the most interesting and fulfilling of the entire album. Um, I think the sound being more stripped back here is also more like a street at night, you know? I, I think it works incredibly well and still feels topical to the rest of this project. I give it a solid nine. The use of all the different singers is a representation of the different cultures in their city, which is considered a massive city of many artists. Red sus. Look at that. No, 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 no. I, I need something that's like, I agree with Clifford or whatever. Some shit like that. That's what Clifford said is not, doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't work. Is that the sound of creeping paranoia laying its roots set, slowly rotting and corrupting, very clear nerve without the present, uh, presenting the threat itself while making sure it's very real and very close. Anyways. All right. Black milk. That's perfect. You know what? That's exactly what I'm looking for. Exclamation point cliff. What? No one said it was British. No, oh, no, no. Oh. Ah! Oh, it's, oh, it's Scottish? Oh. Oh, okay. The song is so unbelievably hypnotic by design. Um, the entire bass line bah, 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 is basically pummeling throughout the entirety of it, and everything else is basically a spice. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I fucking love that one. I'm feeling... Yeah, 
Yeah, that was insane. That was crazy. Uh, another one that works perfectly in the album as well, as I am now asking even more questions. It says a, a sadistic, caressing feeling. It's seductive and cutting. Uh, sadomac... Uh, Jesus, sadomasochism with knives, but euphoric. It's entrancing and boiling me to an opiate-like warmth. Uh, pulsating, it's a sleeper favorite in my opinion. Yeah, what Clifford said, exactly. Next song is actually the title track, Mezzanine. What the fuck? We flew with strollers to illuminate it gently. Spending a week with your friends. Sunset so thickly. All these are floors. title track i could definitely see as being one of the more offsetting uh, albums and potentially one of the more or yeah offsetting songs and one of the more um how do i say this uh, divisive tracks here um i would say this is one of the most inventive songs this genuinely feels like i'm being interrogated it's terrifying like genuinely terrifying Hold on. Fucking. I'm feeling. Brad giving out tens like it's free candy. Um. I guess if you want to look at it like that, um, in my opinion, what I was expecting for this album to do is, you know, continue with some interesting sonic palettes and whatnot. Um, but what pushes it over the edge for me is, again, there is an underlying narrative that this album is following. A, a pattern. It's all patterns. <laughs> the songs have patterns. The, the, the tracks, the flow is a pattern. And it's just, it's it's even bigger than I expected, just in terms of the overall scale of this project. And um, yeah, I'm, in, I'm enjoying it a lot. Next track is the final proper track, huh? It's called Group 4. Good luck, everyone. The song is long. The song is long. Eight minutes. This or Dummy? I probably prefer this over Dummy. But again, both are amazing in their own right. You know? You guys know Massive Attack is actually one guy? It's Let it play out to the next song. You will never know his and I love this. Since the instrumental version is better, this is this this makes so much sense to me. Credits are rolling. Yeah, this is this is the final scene here. Yeah, Austin. Yeah. Genuinely makes me excited for the sequel. No, 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 no. I thought that was an amazing ending to the album. It really feels like you're bringing back. Uh, Horace is almost like you see him on a rock, kind of giving, 
like like a side character of a movie or or one of the people and just sort of like singing a final tune. It kind of wraps up the theme of everything. Like I really liked that. I I thought that was an amazing closer. Okay, so I'll tell you what. Instead of wait, ah, just rating these individual past two tracks because I really enjoyed them, I'm just going to talk about the album as a whole. So, in my opinion, uh, what really makes Mezzanine stick out for me is that it's cinematic, it's a story, it's larger than even the massive individual tracks, and I feel like this whole thing forms into what feels like this bug. Honestly, it feels like there's the body the 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 soul everything about this i feel like is just um weirdly cinematic and can be pieced together in just many different ways um i was shocked at just how well this thing works as a full listen it it feels like by the end of it there is a a real genuine sense of conclusion um but it's also very open ended and yeah i i ended up by the end of this thing being surprised at just how weird some of these tracks would get but uh, they never stopped grabbing the ear. Um, yeah, well, I definitely was in love with the beginning of this project from what I was hearing. I feel like by the end of it, I am actually in love with it for a completely different reason. And I can understand, uh, you know, people sort of disappearing uh, throughout the end of this project. But in my opinion, it really feels like uh, th this album rewards people for sticking around. It, it feels like it, it's like a treasure being able to sort of see where the rest of the story and sound goes if you are willing to, you know, stick around and, and see it out. Um, yeah, and I gotta say, I was quite amazed at how this thing closed. Um, as by the end of this, it really does feel massive. Uh, I'm feeling a 10 on this album. I'm feeling a 10. <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like the moments here um, that were in any regard uncomfortable would quickly be resolved and feel like, you know, basically putting a foot into a cold bath. Um, by the time you kind of get used to it, there's, I don't know. To be honest, a foot in a cold bath never sounds good, so maybe that's not a good idea. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a 10 for me. And uh, yeah, with that, I actually need to take a break. I need to take care of my dogs. Um, so this is going to be an extended break. I feel like this is probably a good way of, uh, um, you know, drifting away, if you will. Uh, I want to thank Harakiri again for this, uh, for sending this uh, project in. As uh, yeah, I was... Um, I was very happy with this. <laughs> very happy with this project. Um, I will be back in, yeah, say like 30 minutes. All right. Um, stream will probably be taken down by then, but whatever. <laughs>